So here's a diagram of a transformer and we need to label the important parts of this circuit both on the left hand side that's called the primary side or the input side and then the secondary side which is the output of the transformer. And remember that transformers can be either step up transformers so that they will step up the voltage and the output voltage will be higher than the input or they could be step down transformers so they would reduce the voltage so we could have 100 volts going in and 50 volts coming out. So let's start off by looking at the input. What is A? Well A is our input voltage. It has to be an alternating voltage or an alternating current because transformers will not work with DC. They won't work with current flowing in just one direction like that from a battery. So this is an alternating current supply and we can label that A. So here we are, here's, here's A. Okay, so we have a current which is going backwards and forwards 50 times a second if it is mains electricity from the national grid. And 50 times a second the current is reversing in this coil. The coil is insulated, so we don't get any short circuits through the coil. It has to go through each of the coils. 50 times a second that current changes direction. And you know that when a current flows in a wire, it creates a magnetic field. And when a current flows in a coil, it also creates a magnetic field. So 50 times a second, we're creating a magnetic field this yellow dotted line, which is contained within an iron core. So first of all, let's label B. B is our primary coil. C is our iron core. Why is it an iron core? What we want to do is, is concentrate that magnetic field that the primary coil creates and iron is a very good magnetic material and so that magnetic field gets concentrated in that iron core and channeled around to the secondary coil which is where we want it. So D is our changing magnetic field. Remember that it's continually growing and collapsing, growing and collapsing inside this iron core. Now the secondary coil is here, that's E. And the changing magnetic field is cutting through the secondary coil as it grows and collapses. And what happens when a magnetic field cuts through a conductor, such as a wire? Well, you induce a potential difference. So we have electromagnetic induction happening at the secondary coil. And so that induces a voltage in the secondary coil. And here's that F, induced potential difference. And that will be an alternating voltage as well, an alternating current going backwards and forwards. And that's why transformers can only work with alternating current, AC, because we need that magnetic field to be continually growing and collapsing to cut through the secondary coil to induce a potential difference which is then AC or alternating as well. I hope that makes sense. Uh, see if you can test yourself on this flashcard to name the important parts of how a transformer works.